Welcome, friends. Welcome to Six Songs and Some Stories. I'm Martha Gallagher, and we're just going to jump right in to some music. such a pleasure to be doing this concert. It is a beautiful, unseasonably warm and sunny November day, and I thought this would be my last opportunity to play outside. So here I am. I'm thinking, sunshine on my shoulder makes me happy. <laughs> One of these days, I'd love to do a whole program of John Denver music. Mm, that'd be wonderful. This next song is one that I thought I was writing for and about me, but it turns out there's a huge club of people in what I call the Good Housekeeping Club. Of all of my talents that I do have, domestic engineering is one that I still aspire to, shall we say. And so this song um, is, well, it's called Good Housekeeping, but it's really it's about friendship. The other day, I dropped by just to say hi. I asked, may I come in? You answered hesitantly, yes, I guess. 
pre-COVID and post-COVID. But oh my word, my house is a mess. <laughs> oh my friend, don't worry. Don't clean a thing for me. It doesn't mean a thing. Cups, oh my friend, don't sweep the floor for me. It would mean so much more to me if we could just sit here and have a little chat about the good old days and now where we're at and all the dreams we still have, you and me. Because in this world, it's good to have someone with whom we can share. Hopes our dreams, laughter and tears. Someone who truly cares. No matter what is going on in our life or in theirs. Thank you. And indeed, it is so good to be with you here, my friends. I love this time of year. And where I live in the Adirondacks of New York State, so the northeastern part of, of New York, I'm about an hour south of the Canadian border, um, this time of year in November is not usually like this. I'm usually swathed in fleece and long underwear, and I love it. I love it. We get our, you know, early snows and it's crisp and cold and clear. And I love that. But I got to say, I'm really digging today. <laughs> but this time of year also is something else that I love. And that is when the plant bittersweet has its berries out. And um, I love bittersweet. And it turns out that in our front yard where uh, for well over a hundred years, there was this huge, huge maple tree. 
and over the years it has fallen down in parts and I think it was two years ago now the last part of it fell which was really sad and it left this wide open space which uh, still feels kind of odd but I don't think I planted this I don't remember I remember remember planting um, some bittersweet somewhere else on the property but a couple of years ago when the tree was gone all of a sudden we started seeing these vines so I'm guessing maybe the birds did this and now there is a huge and I'll show you a picture there's a huge it's like this wonderful just explosion of bittersweet and I just love it and I leave it pretty much like it is I cut a few sprigs to put on a, a wreath on my door but years ago I wrote this piece called bittersweet and even though it really had nothing to do with the plant, I, I love that word, bittersweet. It's so expressive. And to me, this piece is not only timely, because to me, it often feels this time of year is kind of bittersweet, the end of the warmth and the in entering into of winter. And yet, bittersweet can be really beautiful. So I hope that's what this piece will be to you as well. Thank you. 
Thank you. <sighs> mm. So November to me is, is, a, is a big month. In many ways, it kicks right off with, uh, in the Christian church's All uh, Saints Day or All Souls, but also it's November 1st and 2nd or Dia de los Muertos, and beautiful celebration of the dead. And so different, um, you know, when the first time I experienced uh, Dia de los Muertos was when I was in, the, in uh, Tucson and visiting my brother and the celebrations there were just um, wonderful and I know that they take place all over and they're just amazing. And it's this really lively celebration of those who have passed who have left us and honoring them and building these beautiful, the, the altars and the, the uh, ofrendas, um, I think, yes. Um, these beautiful altars with offerings on them, um, food, chocolate, cigarettes, liquor, and photographs, photographs of all these people. And it's just beautiful. And I had the experience of being in Tucson, staying with the daughter of a friend of mine who had a house in this barrio, uh, neighborhood down near downtown Tucson and I was just out walking around and on this vacant lot there was this beautiful altar set up and there was all these people gathered around and they were just this big family and they were celebrating the dead and they saw me standing there kind of you know over in the across the street watching and they invited me to come into their home uh, I don't speak Spanish so there was some fun um, back and forth with sign language and, and pointing at things to to talk about it but they shared this this celebration with me and that was just so beautiful growing up in the Northeast United States um, again November I think more of the color gray and I think of gray headstones and I love cemeteries. I love old cemeteries, especially just wandering. Um, it's just such a generally a peaceful place, and I have discovered so many wise words written on headstones. And you know, those words aren't written for the people that are below the ground. They're written for you and me. And I did create a whole collection of music called Songs from the Stones. And it's music inspired by headstone inscriptions. And so I'm gonna do one for you now. This one is called A Precious One. And I took the words right from the headstone and I did find this particular, I'll call it poem, on several stones in several different cemeteries. And it made me wonder if there were actually like headstone poets were there people that wrote specifically for headstones? I mean, what a, I would love that job. <laughs> so the first time through I sing it as it was written on the stone, but because it's kind of a bittersweet, melancholy end to it, I decided that the second time I went through the song that I would just uplift the feeling a little bit.
November, remember. Those who passed long ago, we still miss or never knew. And those who have passed so recently, so many, so many from COVID. November, for us in the States, we have Veterans Day. And then we also have our Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving to me always makes me think of my, my New England Yankee grandmother. Thanksgiving at her house was oh, a celebration of food and family. essential New England um, Thanksgiving. Kind of like a Norman Rockwell painting, although I'm sure there was much more like, you know, humanness involved in that. but at home. Come ye thankful people, come raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in ere the winter storms begin. God our maker doth celebrating Thanksgiving coming up soon. Happy Thanksgiving. And for those whose traditions are otherwise, a day of gratitude or even a moment of gratitude and thankfulness for all that is, is always a beautiful thing to celebrate. I just love doing live performance, but I also have this other business that I've been working on for over two years now. And it went live about a year ago, and I'm just so in love with it. And I'm delighted that it's, it's reaching and touching so many people. It's an online wellness music series called Just a Moment Music. And each improvised selection is only one minute long. Not only does that fit really well into a busy day, but it's amazing what can happen within you in just a minute. So I thought, I love creating these live, um, and so I thought I would do that for you here. And I'll just set my um, timer on my phone so that I can kind of stick to the minute, because otherwise I was get carried away. And let's just see where it takes us. As a matter of fact, tell you what, I'm going to do this, and we'll do it with a really short meditation. And all you have to do is sit back, make yourself comfortable. You can keep your eyes open, or you can close them. Just settle in to the beautiful music and the meditation. Breathing in. I know I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know I am breathing out. Breathing in. My breath grows deep. 
Breathing out, my breath grows slow. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I feel at ease. Breathing in, I smile. Breathing out, I release. Breathing in, dwelling in the present moment. Breathing out, it is a wonderful moment. It has been such a pleasure to be here with you today, sharing songs and stories right here from a sunny porch on an unusual November day. Thank you so much for joining me. I'd like to finish up with a piece that probably most of you know. It's a piece I grew up singing, certainly singing it uh, around campfires, singing it when I was in Girl Scouts, singing it in uh, junior high and high school with friends. And then it's one of those pieces that kind of disappears sometimes out of your life. And I think, unfortunately, when it came back in, it was because it was being ridiculed. I did a little check up on this. And at least what I found was from a, a NPR report that back in 2012, during some political uh, discord, that it was said, well, it's not like we, meaning different people, different parties, we're going to be sitting together around a campfire singing this particular song. And you know, that, that just feeds into a, a cynicism, which I think for many of us is just not that far below the surface. We don't want to. I certainly don't like to admit that I have it, but I, I do. But it's a wonderful song. It's a beautiful song. And so I'm going to sing it. I have um, my version of it, but you just, if you feel like singing along, I hope that you will just join right in and sing.
just take us out with the tail end of a song I did early. Because it says what I'd like to say. It's so good to be here. It's just so good to be with you, my friend. See you soon.